Hi everyone, it's Cory, and this is a short demonstration of a phenomenon called moiré patterns. Moiré patterns, also called moiré fringes, are large interference patterns that can be produced when an opaque pattern with transparent gaps is overlaid on another similar pattern. This is a random pattern of splotches I created. I copied this pattern and made the white background translucent. You can see they match when I slide it on top. Now if I twist the top image clockwise, something interesting happens. You get this circular pattern. You also get a similar pattern when you twist it anti-clockwise. But here's something odd. See that center of the circle? Move the top image up. And that center moves to the left. Move down the top image and the center goes right. So things are going at right angles. In fact, move it to the right and left, and the center goes up and down. On this slide is the exact same pattern as on the last slide, but I reduced it to 96% of its original size. Now watch as I slide the original size transparency on top of it. get an interesting starburst pattern. Now if you slide it up, that center doesn't go perpendicularly. Instead it reverses direction and goes down. And if you slide it down, the center goes up. As you might suspect, moving the transparency left and right makes that center go in the opposite direction horizontally. You get another interesting effect when you rotate the overlay. You get a spiral! Rotate it the other way, and you get a spiral going the opposite direction. Now what would happen if I moved the overlay left and right? The center of that spiral ends up going in a diagonal direction. And moving the overlay up and down gives you a diagonal movement of the center in the perpendicular direction. There's a whole lot of math going on with these moiré patterns, but you don't really need to look at all the trig and calculus to get a basic understanding of what's going on here. Instead, you can just think about a couple of the little splotches on the diagrams and understand that they're not perfectly round dots. You can think of them as elongated. Here I have two sticks that represent exaggerated splotches. If I duplicate them, and then rotate them slightly like I do with the transparencies, I can demonstrate the 90 degree motion of the spot in the first example. Look at the left set of sticks, and notice where they intersect. If I move the rotated stick to the right, you'll see the intersection move up and down. And if you look at the set of sticks on the right side of the screen, and follow the intersection as I move the rotated stick up and down, you'll notice that the intersection moves left and right. Simple illustrations like this can help you understand the much more complex interactions going on with the moiré pattern. You can make these moiré patterns out of just about anything that has a lot of data points in the image. For instance, here's a picture of a bunch of trees from above. I took that picture, upped the contrast, and turned it into a simpler image. Then I made a transparency out of it so I could overlay it on top. Twist it, and you get those nice circles again. Move it around, and you get the same motion from the center that you did with the first random pattern we used. Most moiré patterns are created from more uniform shapes and patterns than what I have just used. Here's a field of triangles. I'll slide in an overlay I created. Rotate a bit, and you get some hexagons. Rotate a little more, and you see some rhombi and then a set of lines. A series of triangles appears. Give it a good turn, and the hexagons return. And then the triangles again, some with stars on the inside. And the interesting patterns and shapes continue as you rotate through 360 degrees.
This simple checkerboard is my last example. Again, I'll slide an overlay I made on top of it. Then rotate it a bit, and you get a large square. As you rotate further, the square shrinks in size and is joined by other squares. You have to stare at this pattern for a while, but there are some stars, squares, octagons, and other interesting things. Here we have some near circles and stars. And squares are returning. Finally, there's a large X. And then the square becomes completely covered. Moray patterns are everywhere. They're seen constantly in physics. You may have already run into them if you've seen interference patterns in waves. These patterns come up in math higher mathematics, and as you would suspect, there's a lot of trigonometry involved in understanding them completely. In art, printing, and textiles, an understanding of moiré can be critical. Interesting, the moiré comes from the ancient Arabic textile industry. The word mohair, a type of fabric, is actually the old word for moiré. Banknotes often use many small lines, taking advantage of the fact that counterfeits will produce unintended moiré patterns. Among many other places you'll run into moiré patterns are in the engineering of video display screens, image processing, and the science of marine navigation. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I hope you learned something new. Thanks for watching.